The McElroy brothers are not experts, and their advice should never be followed. Travis insists he's a sexpert, but if there's a degree on his wall, I haven't seen it. Also, this show isn't for kids, which I mention only so the babies out there will know how cool they are for listening. What's up, you cool baby? One, two, three, four. It's the start of something beautiful. A small acquaintance has blossomed and ripened into a precious friendship. I could have never seen what was coming for me. Hangs at the skate park, hangs by the beach. My life, it feels like. Hello, everybody, and welcome to My Brother, My Brother, Me and Advice Show for the Modern Era. I'm your oldest brother, Justin McRae, and I have to remind myself that every single episode is another chance to shine. <laughs> What's up, Trav Nation? I'm your middleest brother, Travis Big Dog, Wolf Wolf McElroy. I appreciate the honesty of you have to remind yourself. Yeah. To do a good to do a good show. I Sometimes not not hear- to do a good show, Griffin. What he said was that it's his chance to shine, which would imply that perhaps up till now you and I are going to take a back seat on uh, oh, boys, this one. When you I'm Griffin at- McElroy, the baby brother. When you crack open your email and you see 733 staring at you in that subject line, part of you feels like, certainly that's enough of them. <laughs> right, certainly. Surely I've Cer- shown enough. Certainly that's enough of them. <laughs> you get it. <laughs> like how many good flights does a pilot have to do before you're like, he's got it. He, he's he can fudge he's got this it. one but a little bit. But I remember, every one of these is a work of art. <laughs> Like every one of these is a true, special that's individual work of art. That's a true. To change hearts and minds. I think we're also in a bit of an unexciting numerical groove. It is hard. Seven thirty three. Who gives a shit, man? Can you guys? Seven thirty seven. We can do a little. Oh, it'll be like thing. Sully. We love a Sully. prompt for a joke. Like we can do. We love that shit. Um, do some words you're gonna eat. Right through the ink cartridge of that pen. I'm real. Yeah, don't you I've been there. Yourself. But I've speaking there. of eating, if you guys are hungry, I've got a big announcement. That's not a the connective tissue of it, that. It all gets quite there. loose. So it's stringy. Give me a second, because you know how influencers these days, and this is so topical. Everybody's doing meal deals um, <laughs> with with a uh, thing I've decided in. To yeah, happy with Fourth the, of July, by the way, everybody. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah that is the yeah. date that we're recording this. Obviously, talking about this. I've decided. To partner with Chipotle, uh, okay. To do a meal deal, the Travis. Uh, it is currently an unofficial partnership. Um, is this but, is this like when you are like a cyberpunk hero? They give you a, a, a drink named after you at the hacker bar. Is that yeah, basically sort of like of? that? My hope is that we'll kind of do a grassroots partnership deal where if enough people go in and ask for the Travis, yeah, Chipotle yeah. will start carrying it. Um, I am actually hugely that. Don't do that. Hey, listener at home, don't do that. That'll make you don't even know what the Travis is. No, but I'm more talking about you are saying, hey, do this thing that'll embarrass you, and that'll bring me some sick satisfaction. They probably won't know what the Travis is. It won't bring me any satisfaction. Yeah. So I'm again, like we're agreeing. Then don't do this if you're listening. This is what you're about to hear is pure jokes. Not you're gonna go in. You're gonna say, give me the Travis. They're gonna say, what's that? Don't actually do that. Grab an ex, grab like a large cup, right? That you would put a drink in, fill it with guacamole, light ice, and that's the Travis. Okay, why is that? The, why is that the Travis? <laughs> I guess let's start. Like, choose you. Ha- how many questions do you have off the top of your head? Because I've got like nine. Uh, why, why? Why is that the, this? Why do you like oh, it? Why this? I don't. I don't. Number like one. Why this? Of, Juice and I are agreed. Top why priority. This? Why? Why, why do this? Oh, because I don't like a lot of ice in my guacamole. Okay, so <laughs> that doesn't that avoids that sidesteps the question in sort of a funny way. What are you doing with all that guac? You just chuzzle that down. Well, I mean, it's good if you need it. You put it home. You, know, you put some cling film over the top, and then you got. Guacamole it's not for a, a while. sorry. No, you're you're mistaken and confused. Chipotle is not a Tex Mex grocery store where you go to <laughs> stock up, stock up your supply of guacamole. Well, that's why it's the Travis because I'm kind of an out of the box 
thinker, and not a lot of people stock up on their supplies at Chipotle, and I right. would if I ever went there. You've never been to Chipotle? I don't think so. <laughs> Wait, not for jokes. <laughs> not for jokes. I am actually deeply curious. If we could step out of <laughs> Travis, can I get you to break kayfabe for just a moment <laughs> and step yeah. out of jokes? The thing I think is most interesting, like I'm already flashing forward to telling yeah. my wife, like, honey, do you know Travis has never been to <laughs> I just don't think I have. Travis, step just... outside. Travis, please. The kayfabe, I'm going to take it. Shoop. I'm put it down on the ground for a minute. We're going to put that on pause. Out of the room. Out yeah. of the room. No jokes, only honesty, real un- uncut Trav. Please, I'm asking you as your brother to give me a real thing here. Have you have you eaten at Chipotle? Don't say I think I have. I need a – you would know whether or not you've done this or not. Here's what I'll say. I can picture the interior <laughs> of a Chipotle. Okay. I don't remember eating there. So if I have, it's been like once in my entire life. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean. Tell if you me can, if you've eaten at Chipotle or not. If you've envisioned the uh, the, the, the front, memory is so malleable is the problem. <laughs> it has been worked. It's like a Cold Stone Creamery, but hot and with rice and beans. Yeah, no, no. Like cream. I said, I understand the concept and I can yeah. picture it. Yes. Let me, let, I, me, let me tell you this. Uh, you get a delivery bag of chipotle and you get out the the bowl that you ordered what's that look like what's that look like trav what's your chipotle order well or what is the thing physically actually yeah look like? what are you eating in your mind's eye don't uh, say a big cup of ice and guacamole the bits on the fucking uh, ground still. We we're gonna go back corner. we might go back and pick up the bit we may not i, I know there's like yet. right it's kind of like a cardboardy kind of bowl and there's like rice in it and like yes. some other fixings and stuff yeah and, what, and how do they cover it on top of it I mean, like a burrito? Is that I didn't ask you to describe it for Pictionary. I want you to just tell me what you order there. But I'm I'm mostly, I'm conjuring. What's your favorite protein? What's your favorite Chipotle protein? I, I don't think I, this motherfucker's eating at Chipotle juice. I think he's living a Chipotle at, free Trav. life. I don't think you've, have you had Chipotle? Why are you guys treating <laughs> this like a gotcha when I started? The entire I segment think- saying, I don't think I've ever eaten there. And now you guys are like quizzing me as I'm like, I don't know, man. And you're like, ha. Ah, I will I tell you this. eaten at Chipotle. We, we travel a lot, Travis. And the thing about the Chipotle is that if you're ever out on the road traveling and you're, hung- you're hungry, you start to get a grumble in your tummy, you can reach in your pocket and take out your keys. Uh, <laughs> Chipotle is close enough for you to throw your keys at it and hit it. So you can go. Uh, so yeah. that's what's like, just like law of large numbers. The number of Chipotles you've seen and decided not to eat at <laughs> okay. is so large. I have a way of settling this, Travis. Okay. Think about your favorite Chipotle. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I, okay. Think about your number one. I'm not even Chipotle. sure what we're settling remember, anymore. <laughs> remember the first time you went there to your favorite Chipotle. Yeah. Are you visualizing your favorite Chipotle and think about the first time you went there? I can't. I don't know where Chipotle is in Cincinnati. Scroll down your delivery right app of it. choice right. at your orders right and now, scroll Greg, down and let and yeah. see how close Travis is. 100% I don't have any delivery orders from Chipotle in my phone. Okay. There's, it. It's just like, I'm not, can I just say this, listener at home, if you're getting like confused or ready for this bit to end, I understand. It's <laughs> truly, a, this is just interesting now to me and Justin and maybe <laughs> yeah, we're not only us. Do it, do jokes right now. I okay? don't even love Chipotle. I don't eat at Chipotle anymore because there's a lot of really great restaurants in my neighborhood now. I, I, I don't go there for that, but it's crazy to have never had Chipotle so I, I would say statistically in my 40 years, I'm because I'm not going to sit here and be like, maybe a paparazzo has like a single picture of me leaving Chipotle. I don't want to get gotcha. I'm saying statistically, I have been to Chipotle enough in my 40 years as to say, I don't think I've ever been there statistically. Right. Maybe once. But I don't no, know. No, Travis. <laughs> no, Travis. No. This is where it keeps breaking down for me. OK, let's. I. I can't show you a diagram because it would dox Travis. Thank but you. But there's a this would be a wild thing to dox. A me wild way to get him. Yeah. Wild but way to go. Basically, there is a there's a pentagram of Chipotle's <laughs> surrounding him. If you were to connect the dots between the Chipotle surrounding Travis, it would it would make a pentagram. And I'm going to send it in Slack like within so four miles. Travis's you. Travis's house is built on a Chipotle ley line, and maybe you, that's if, it. If you just follow the the ray, then you will eventually arrive. And you can like, eat is it. There and one within four miles of me. 
Oh yeah, three point four miles. Three point two. Yeah. So Griff, as you oh can see, oh my god, see there's there, a bunch. Hold there's on. You know, like four mile radius. So many Chipotle's. Uh, oh wow, but it is arranged in a perfect constellation. I mean, that's yeah, Travis. Let me say, like I kind of get it now. I kind of get it now. You're not getting a lot of Chipotle foot traffic of your own feet. Um, yeah. So I do. It's like I do they're not. That. It looks like they're closing in on you from this yeah. diagram. It does. Service. It looks like a family of velociraptors. Now, here is, is what I would. The pincer. Here is what I would just love because we didn't have a lot of pre-planned content for this episode. No, Trav. It's coming up on lunchtime. What would you think about putting in an order to get you some Chipotle that you can enjoy for the first time live in our program? I think that that would make for some horrible audio. <laughs> There's nothing they sell there that doesn't mush up terribly. <laughs> it's all mush. It's today. all mush. Sometimes they wrap up the mush so you can eat it on the go, but I like to rock with a bowl of mush. Uh, just I don't want to have to just put in an order and guess at what you like, Jeff. So it'd probably no, be thank you. you. I, I also like to. Put in I do order, bowl because so. I like to be able to see the mush. Also, which is a let's pr- talk I, about Travis's first Chipotle order. Okay, yeah, yeah. Where, do you go where, burrito or bowl? We start there. Well, Which, uh, I don't even know if he has the app open. Hey, Trav, pull up the Chipotle app on your phone. <laughs> what? I don't have the app. C-H-I in the search bar, and then Chipotle. it'll autofill, and it'll show up on your phone. Yeah. Wait, Sometimes you it you seems like a lot of, of work. If on it, I'm on it, and I'm not saying the ordering process. I'm saying I'm looking at pictures. Yeah. Of like their dishes. Yeah. 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 It seems like a lot of Is work it to trigger eat them. anything within you. No. I it's don't a- like eating things that fall apart while I'm eating them. Okay, I understand bowl. that very much. Bowl, bowl is is a good is a good way to go. Okay, so you're thinking about a bowl. I love that. Uh, base- I'm not thinking about a bowl. You guys We're are thinking like bowl for this a, one. A bowl into my head. <laughs> Juice you, okay. and I are thinking for Travis a bowl. <laughs> I feel like I'm having a bespoke. Like I'm at a tailor, <laughs> a and bowl, you guys are asking a series of questions. <laughs> I'm just responding to you. You said you don't like when things fall apart. We have a limited set of options for people like yourself. Okay, <laughs> it's gotta all be caught some. Yeah, by something, Travis. Man. The other options is salad. I know you're not <laughs> yeah. going there, man. You're bowl gonna get the or bowl. burrito, but we. We have, we have burrito bowls. We have salads. Which Gotta go bowl. Are? Produce. No, are we gonna because I'm worried if we go far, too far down this, I'm going to have to eat this thing. It's it's pretty it's pretty good. It's not hook. We, this doesn't work that way, Travis. Like, if we talk about the food all day, it's not just going to show up. Well, they have smoked house. brisket. Oh, it's now plus $5, though. Plus $5 for smoked brisket. Now you're talking. So the burrito bowl is like, it's just like if... You dumped it all out. And then the salad is just the burrito bowl with some shredded lettuce in there. Don't yeah, let it fool true. you. It's not don't, Yeah, don't be fooled. It's you can actually turn a burrito bowl into a salad by saying, let me get some extra romaine lettuce in there. Life hack. Now, protein, Trav. What are you thinking protein-wise? What would be your go he, he balked at the brisket, you so I know that some of the premium the options. You the premium options the is not going to go for. It's just $5. Is, I mean. No, it's tri- that's, hu- that's a huge upcharge. That's crazy. Carnitas. Perhaps. They're great. Uh, Carnitas are a great choice, Trav. Tender, juicy. You're that's a great. That. I'll tell you what I. I'll tell you what I love about Carnitas, Trav. And I think it represents a lot of wisdom on your part, and perhaps even some systemic knowledge of Chipotle you probably possess because you've eaten there before. Is Carnitas is a beginner, I think, an, a great beginner option. Mm-hmm. It's not as assertive or spicy as a barbacoa. Um, it's not traditional and boring like a chicken. Uh, uh, no, no, I will say this. Now, the chicken at Chipotle, though, does is. pack enough heat to put some toddlers off. Yeah, that's so, true, actually. Carnitas are a nice, mild option. There's a bit of spice to the chicken there. I just want to warm it. Great texture. Never Chipotle, you great, te- great texture, really mushy. Really, really uh, mushy meat. The perfect amount of mush, which the is just sweet, a mushy meat. I don't meat. like this. No, 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 but it's good when you get it all together in no, one bite. No, I'm not bite. saying you're used to the word mushy. I'm saying that the, the experience I'm having currently in this moment, it, occupying the body that I have right now as you two talk to me, I'm yeah. not enjoying it. Okay, <laughs> let's, well, let's, move, on. let's move on. Let's move on then. But now let's I move. am hungry. No, let's move on. It's a very fair, a very fair point. I think it was just too much. No, it was just fair. Too, too much, much attention move on. on that makes perfect. It sense got too to me. real. Yeah. yeah. Well, and there's also it's hard to contribute 
when you've only been to Chipotle a handful of times yeah. at most. A, a, a quantum physics Five number to of six times. times. A, Schroding, I, oh, a Schrodinger's guess, amount of times. Which kind of their salsas, just to put a bow on this, do you, do you prefer? Uh, in general, in life, I like a Verde. Do they have any kind of Verde? They no, do. I don't know, I'm fucking yeah. Do they? This is a green Verde. Yeah, I guess so. corn. It's more of a darkish, yeah. darkish brownish. I have long worked in very physically demanding job and have recently taken up rock climbing. Between all the heavy lifting at work and hitting the climbing gym several times a week, I have a lot of upper body strength and extremely well-defined on arms. It's gotten to the point where my brothers, <laughs> Travis and Griffin... <laughs> Whoa, wait, wait. Wait, <laughs> wait, huh? No, sorry. It's gotten to the point where coworkers and new acquaintances regularly say things like, wow, you are built, or you have really nice arms. What is the appropriate response to this? They're not being weird or creepy, and I'm very proud of my physical strength. Oh. That's for muscular and trying to be modest in Manhattan. She, her. My is it go-to? so hard to be so strong and built? She's oh tough, man, huh? poor you with your huge, powerful, strong body. My my go to because this happens to me all the time. <laughs> this happens to me all the time. Sorry, Justin, just fucking in it response punched. to my thing, just sort of uppercutted his microphone, and now he's bussing. I, I was going to. I was going. <laughs> I know what you were to trying make, to do. I was going to make a crying. <laughs> expression with my hands. Like, but instead you punch like, your microphone like, like a real well, under professional. Like I was rubbing, wiping tears out and then it occurred to me that that's yeah. not going to read on the podcast. It was a weird energy. But it occurred I... to me as I was hitting the microphone so I just bailed on the action. Yeah, so it looked cool. like I was just hitting the microphone and then stopping. I didn't even like the energy of the, the bit I did and I was like hopefully we'll just move on from that but Justin really hung a lantern on it with that uppercut. <laughs> Travis, I apologize. No, for, no, no, it's fine. It happens to me all the time. I've got powerful fish lifters. Um, you just hit them with a huh, these old things. That's great. I love that's, that. That's good. I am really torn because I've been telling my kids that we just don't comment on people's bodies ever. <laughs> that's been kind of the hard line that we have drawn at our house is just see everybody's kind of a, a shapeless spirit. Just, just live. Right. I, yeah. I, I feel like I don't necessarily, I feel like nobody should be talking about anybody's bodies at all. Just okay. the period. But the question isn't about them complimenting other people's bodies, Justin. No, yeah. no, no, no. But other people hear this too, right? And so I am I just wanted to point out that a much better thing might be in your day-to-day life to just like not <laughs> just be like, hey, choice, anything. I, I, really. I'll tell you what I don't like about complimenting only muscles is mm. like if someone is like wiry or stocky in like a cool way it's you don't that one doesn't get much sort of commentary because you can't walk up to somebody and be like hey you're you're stocky in a way i like i yeah. think that's a wild yeah. you look you look difficult to knock over yeah uh, what a what sturdy you? Okay. individual you are wow see great trunk <laughs> Powerful. <laughs> Don't tell powerful someone they were trunk. Immovable. Tr- Congratulations on your powerful trunk. Look at this immovable oak over here. This redwood. Why do I have to solve the problems of someone who is so physically strong? Hmm? True. Why do I have well, to so solve that she, your so that strong she make, people can be emotionally weak? Justin. We juice, let, just to clarify, we are the mouse pulling the thorn out of the lion's paw. We <laughs> help this strong like muscly person so that later if bullies come to try to get us mm-hmm. we can say i careful now we have a strong friend yeah we help them we helped not. them kind of a little bit that's why in in like tv shows and movies you never see like oh here's the strong you know person and here's like the nerd person they work together because one or you never see like the nerd be like i'll help you with your homework and you help me with bullies and then the jock is like i'm a straight a student and i've got uh I've got, jocks you know, are so smart on tv now to yeah harvard and then the nerd's like oh shit i don't have anything to offer you anymore um um that never happens yeah i think the bigger problem is not what you do with your mouth and saying but what happens with the arms. Oh, yeah. Because I'm thinking about if I'm carrying a baby or something and people are like, wow, nice arms. I'm they might be talking about the baby. 
I'm maybe, Fair. but I'm immediately so aware of what I'm doing with them, right? Yeah. I'm immediately like, I guess I should not flex or yeah, flex sure. more <laughs> to show it off better. That's or, a that's a challenge they have posed for you. Great arms. Right. Am I? Should I show them the full capacity? Like, if they're like, "Oh, if you're interested in arms, let me show you the fullest." Like, oh, let I- me show you all the all the different features they got. I can say, <laughs> yeah, uh, oh, they can do arms. This. They can do this. arms. When you're holding a baby, you're in the fucking zone. Don't take me out of my zone. I'm in the zone. I need total concentration. On that this is true. When I'm but in, that's my why I zone. like these old things because there's enough these old of a humorous response. That you can get away with even flexing a little bit more, and everyone's like, "How playful, right?" I, and you say, "Oh, these old things," and they're like, "Ah, what a bashful, playful response while still showing off all the special features that their arms possess." I have shed a, 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 a pretty much all of my uh, knee jerk uh, dis- dislike or uh, judge judgment of people with big, strong bodies because what I've learned is like a lot wow. of them are just like. They're they're strong nerds. Like they're nerds they're about like us. getting watching physical one hundred. That's a hundred big nerds that o- that care only about muscle stuff and sports stuff. But they're like nerds about it. Yeah, it's interesting. And so to me, it could be they're trying to give get you into a conversation about like how do you do your sh- how do you do your shit. I think that's interesting because you do it and you take it seriously and you get you got strong because of it. And that's neat. That is neat. Just don't be a jerk with your might. That's the big problem that we all have. Use it responsibly. They might also be looking for a not weird way to ask you if you would like just pick them up and carry them around for a while because I would like that. I'm tired. I'm so tired. I have to pick my kids up all the time and there's no 12 foot like adult behind me who then picks me up while I'm tired. (laughs) That's all I want. And once the boss starts doing it, it's going to be like, is the boss being passive aggressive? Is the boss threatened by me? Because I'm like way huger no, than the boss No, they be carried is. around. Yeah, Do you worry me. that people, that you need to direct people to other muscles that they should enjoy as long as they're around? If you like, th- if you like these, wait till you <laughs> this see. This is just what Let me take you on a tour. <laughs> I'm going to hike my pants. Me. I, I want you to see my quads. I am going to hike my pants way, way up. Do Like, I need HR in the room while I do this. It's just yeah. quads. Well, that's, I mean, that's what would happen if someone admired, like, you were playing Pokemon cards or whatever, and they said, that's a great one. You'd be like, well, let me show you some of my rare cards, right? Yeah, Why yeah, can't sure. I do that with my muscles? Yeah, let me exactly. show you muscles other people don't have that I've developed. Uh-huh. I've collected all the muscles. I oh, mean, I'm really having a hard time imagining being strong. <laughs> do you want to see my I'm, muscles, I'm Justin? really struggling for the bit. I'm trying to come up with some jokes that my, I might do if I was a strong person. You have and powerful I'm really legs. really struggling to. In, in, you have a, let me tell you, man. Sometimes you come up to me when we're on tour, and you give me a little back rub, a little yeah. shoulder mm. massage, and that shit is fearsome. That shit yeah, is is effective. And yeah, so that's true. I guess I am very strong. Thank you, Griffin. And you're a, you're you're a shorts wearer, and I've enjoyed your quads and calves. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely yeah. sweet. I mean, we all have pretty great gams. Yeah, it's a sort of for the. Uh, uh, my but. gams could be better. I'm I'm at arms, man. I could have better gams. I know that about myself. I'm trying. Hey, I know we're getting close to money zone time, but before we do, I just want to do a quick. Um, this could be a new segment on the show if we wanted to, just a quick background check, which is to say, like, let's sort of do a quick audit of all of our backgrounds. Obviously, mine's sort of very shelf forward where I try to show off some of my favorite stuff. Um, and then <laughs> Juice has the sort of like paneling behind him and he'll, he'll put up a few of his little 3D printed uh, little toys up there. And I think that's so cool. Mm -hmm. And then Travis used to have more plants and fish in it. um, And now I see there is one plant and a skeleton. And then we also have, I believe that is a plushy Donkey Kong. That is Um, a plushy Donkey Kong. I got that from uh, a claw claw machine, machine, I'm guessing. Yeah. While we were doing Donkey Kong Country. And so I put him up there. There's also a little statue thing of Merle Stop. Magnus, Taco, and Angus behind me, and our, of course, YouTube play button uh, that we got. Still for sucks. Getting... Still yeah. sucks that you just took that. It's hidden behind plants. Like he's not even. I wouldn't even plants. hide it. I would put. I would. I would honestly, Trav. I would swap the positions of Donkey Kong and the YouTube play award. Do you want me to 3D print a frame that just says Travis's button? <laughs> put hide Donkey Kong because we don't even do him anymore. Ah! <laughs> Just dropped his skeleton off the, the thing. <laughs> yeah, the YouTube play button, give it a more featured position. 
And then it's Donkey hard bragging. I think it feels bad bragging about the silver, doesn't it? <laughs> I mean, it's kind it's of the weird. worst one you're gonna have. It kind of puts an exact cap on your popularity level. It's like, this well, is we exactly only just how started doing are. YouTube stuff. It's I feel great so about it. Years now. ago, <laughs> <laughs> our YouTube channel is only what a decade old. <laughs> Travis, that's way better. That's way yeah. better, man. Now you, you look prominent. Like I feel like I'm showing off. Travis, Travis, please. Where does your light belong? On the candlestick or under the bushel? You're right. Yeah, you're right. Don't hide it under a bushel. Oh, no. Put Don't it hide your on YouTube. your show. You have to be a pretty big bushel. Put that YouTube silver award up so that everyone in the house may enjoy it. At my local coffee shop today, I noticed wrestler John Cena dropped by. I doubt it. Wow. <laughs> Just calling our- <laughs> hey, hey, guys, have we ever done this before when they ask the question and we're like, you f- fucking lying. liar. <laughs> I doubted that they saw him because I. Oh, I. OK, I, I mean, let's unpack. Let's unpack this then. I thought that I don't follow wrestling, but I thought there was something about you can't see him. Oh, right. gosh. OK, now I get I'm it. so okay. sorry. I no, I was out of my lane. No, guys. Just, this, was my fa- this was my one. failing. And it's my it's the way Fuck. I have lapsed as a wrestling fan. I forgot that that was his blew it again. You didn't man. blow it. You did a Fuck. kick ass joke. Me and Travis blew it on that one. We I didn't did. do a very good job. So anyway, <laughs> saw John Cena, asked a barista later, and was told he visits regularly. Obviously, the best thing to do with this information is nothing, which I will admit that you've already failed <laughs> yes. at by writing this email, but moving on. But this is the next degree closest this to nothing. This is next to nothing. Yes, yes. Absolutely. And let him go about his day. But if given the opportunity while he is around, brothers, what might be the most impressive way to order a, and drink a coffee or tea? Oh, my friend. I think that this is too short-sighted. I don't think there's an impressive way to order a drink or a tea or whatever. That said, I do think there are impressive things one could be doing in a coffee shop at a table that would be noticed and appreciated by anyone, let alone Jonathan Cena. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, right? right? Like <laughs> playing chess against yourself, okay, right? Spinning the thing around, that's going to get noticed. That's going to get um, noticed. Finishing your novel and loudly announcing it's finished <laughs> when you yeah. slam the laptop shut, something like that would be appreciated. Yeah, that's not going to work. I do think there you would have to do a pretty extreme version of it, of like closing your laptop and be like, hey, everyone, I just got engaged. Then John Cena might look at you and be like, great work. I don't think anything less than uh, a fresh engagement. <gasps> My wife's in labor. Fucking John Cena will turn and carry me to the hospital, John Cena. Well, no, see, here's let's let's talk about expectations. (laughs) Mm -hmm. (laughs) You will never be John Cena's friend. Never ever. Whoa. Wow. Never ever ever ever. And you don't know that. No, I know that. I'll never be John Cena's friend. Neither will Justin, neither will Travis. It will never, ever, never, ever happen. Ever, 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 ever. Oh, my we, God. You guys I, haven't heard of manifesting? Come on, the secret, no, man. It's I've got it written it, on my board. No, we'll never be John Cena's friend. That's why I wouldn't care to see John Cena in a green room. If there's I'd no chance to, I'll ever be the person's friend, I, do, I think it's great to see a celebrity. Yeah. I think it's great seeing a famous person because I will feel no pressure. If I see someone, we're like, I bet we could get to be friends. Then it's, it's gone. Then it's I'm all out the window. Yeah, it's chaos. It. It's pandemonium. Sometimes will... I forget how polar opposite we so are different. in some regards. Yeah, yeah. that's cool though. It's it's the, it's the it takes a village to make a podcast. Um, Travis, okay, I want to hear how you would wear down John Cena. No, I no, no I'm saying, but the difference was when I see somebody and I'm like, I could be friends with them. That feels good. When I see a celebrity, I'm like, that's so far out of my I suddenly panic. Um, no, but like that. Travis, I'm saying. If I had to do this thing that this person is talking about, mm-hmm. the, the and I was like Arsene Lupin, and I and I needed guidance. Yeah. You were the person I would come to. And I would be like Travis, help me plan this friendship heist. Okay, and I'm asking you as the best of the biz that okay. I know. Yeah, what would be your strategy to bring down? Cheers. By which we mean, and then wait, just let me uh, get on your other shoulder here and say that I think that this bit could trend towards uh, levels of kind of hypnotism or running some sort of con or other <laughs> no, sort of no things that this. might remove John Cena's agency in some way. <laughs> I will. Say and let me this, just get ahead of that. Let me just get ahead of that and say, don't do that because people by do doing not like this that. by saying it out loud. I am trademarking it, and no listener is allowed to do it. Okay. Okay, but if, you would, have, if part of it is putting him in a big box, no, or no, 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 no. I'm calling Brock Tune. I would never yeah. Brock Tune him. No, okay, no great. Way. 
I would, uh, um, he gets in line a couple of people behind me, right? And I would lean into the. Uh, um, Tell me how you orchestrate that. First, let's stop there. <laughs> the Tell me how you orchestrate line. it so that John Cena gets in line a couple of people happens, behind you. He comes in here often, right? I see him come in. <laughs> but in my, in my head, you just rolled out the map and you like, and like turn on the light above it. You're like, okay, you're assuming. Here, is the, here is his plan. Hopefully, he will end up <laughs> two customers You're behind me. So that I easier. have orchestrated this. And, and that's not how I operate, my man. I'm in there. I see an opportunity. But you don't see, this is what I'm saying, Travis. You don't see the opportunity. You got to the store before him, and there's two people behind you, and then John Cena. That's crazy. There's okay. no okay. fucking okay. cashier. Uh, uh, cashier, he comes in. I lean in the cashier. I say, um, I like, here's, you know, an uh, extra like 15 bucks. I want to pay for whatever he gets. Yeah, I'm a big fan. Don't make a big deal out of it. Right? Right. So his order is covered with okay. whatever he orders, right? Is this at a start? Is, so this is at just like a cafe. Okay. Cool. Yeah, the, in this circumstance. Right? Um, and then if he decides to say something like, oh, man, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Right? Because he's a regular. I'm not taking this opportunity as like a one-time chance. There will be more opportunities. Right? Yeah. Now he at least has some kind of recognition of who Rome I am. Rome was not built in a day. And now there's an opportunity to perhaps engage in conversation the next time or a shared interest is present. But I think that that is also true of literally anyone. Yeah, sure. Right? Outside of that, um, where, you know, you see someone reading a book that you've read before, and you say, I love that book. That's a great choice. Whatever, right? Some kind of introduction, not going to uh, yeah. change, you know, <laughs> you're not going to write books about how great this introduction was. But just yeah. a chance to start a conversation. It is more high pressure, though, than a conversation with a normal person because when you're talking yes. to a normal person, you're not running the risk of b making such a big boner that they go on their wrestling show that night and they're like, this fucking jabroni tried to buy my drink at Drink drink More. No way. His name was Travis McElroy. Like, and then like you're done in that town. Can you imagine, though? Hey, Griffin, in that scenario. That's a win for you. John that? Cena that's a win gets for up you. at like a fucking like, smackdown or whatever and starts talking yeah. shit about... <laughs> <laughs> Are you That's kidding sick, me? Man. I'm okay. over the moon. And then fucking Brock Lesnar comes out and is like, I actually like Travis McElroy. <laughs> <laughs> I thought graduation was good. <laughs> it's, he's an acquired taste, but it's this fucking- It's not for everybody. But he's, he's the trying spice that makes it right. Yeah, he needs, then, he's, uh, listen, uh, I like him and I get that he's not funny, but that's the humor. <laughs> Brock Lesnar with a fucking knife tattoo and a fucking Trav Nation tattoo on his other pet. <laughs> I like that hey. shit. I got, oh, I think I got this cracked wide open, guys. Oh, boy, okay. You ready? You're John yeah. Cena. You're John Cena and I'm me, all right? Wait, which Both of us are John Cena? So Wait, we would equal you're half the, of a John Cena. You're both John Cena, Cena and I'm me. All right, okay, so Wait, let's fuse. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Can you not make this about you guys? Thank you. Oh, sure, sure, My sure. apologies. Yeah, it's okay. It's no problem. Piece of gum, Mr. Cena? Yeah, that's the whole thing. That's the oh, whole okay. Thing. That's I thought we were gonna have to thing. interact with it. Um, no, 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 listen, listen, listen. Piece of gum, Mr. Cena. Okay, <laughs> the confidence is that you're projecting I'm is truly confidence. outrageous. Can you try it again? <laughs> Wait, what's John? this? What's slapping the letter? A take. Can you do a take where you say John? Yeah, yeah. And raise your mic up too, so you don't have to hunch over like a little, like a <laughs> cool. He's a go to <laughs> Well, why did you yell? Why did you just yell at me, Jabroni? <laughs> I'm going to talk about you on SmackDown tonight. What's your full okay. Christian Can name? Give me a stick of. Okay. Give me stick of gum, John. Stick, stick of, of gum, gum John? John. Stick of. Do you like a stick of gum, John? Ooh, John. Well, hey, John. John. I want to refer you, you to an. Elite give me a Mr. Cena. Of, give me a Mr. Cena. Stick of gum, Mr. Cena. Mm. Yeah. Stick of gum, Mr. Cena. And then if he says yes. Then we're friends. If he says no, he's getting coffee. And eventually he's going to be like, I probably should take this poor guy's gum. It seems really important to him. Yeah. And then he starts to rely on that gum, right? Yeah. Because that maybe that day someone's like, hey, John, great breath today. And he's like, thank you. I had a piece of gum. And then it's like, you're a lucky charm maybe, right? Yeah. Eventually he'll say yes. You'll be and, friends. And Stick in this universe, sorry, John Cena doesn't know where to get gum from. Yeah, <laughs> outside of you. What? That's whoever, a good question. Whoever thinks of picking some up, look, I got a, I got a jumbo bag of Eclipse on my desk right now. No problem, Mister Cena. He's not gonna have it walk around with jangly. That's not a Eclipse stick of gum, gum though, right? Those are little, those are little sort of tablet gums. Chicken tab. 
Chickle tab? Chickle tab of gum? Mr. Cena? Mr. This Cena? is great. Juice, Coffee I know. Candy? I know. Moist <laughs> towelette? Moist Juice. Towelette? Mr. Cena, would you like my pocket knife, Mr. Cena? Any help today? Would you like now, my cash, Mr. Cena? Let me just ask you how yeah. many pieces, in all the times that we've like been lucky enough to like have uh, you know, FaceTime with our audience, how many sticks of gum have you accepted from them? <laughs> how many sticks of gum? Okay, but here's the problem is that we're colleagues in this situation because we could just go to the same coffee shop, right? Mm. So there's no power dynamic. Like, there's Range. no power dynamic, right? You right? have to pretend like you don't know him. Maybe yeah, no, hey, Mr. Cena. I got enough gum here for everybody in the place. Sure. You offer it to some people, and then you say, "You big stranger." Yeah, or piece of gum, Mister. Oh. Just like, hey, you're the Undertaker, right? You want some gum? Yeah, and then I'll oh, hand him nagging. I don't know if that's. I good think or that, bad. that would be. I think people would be pretty stoked. Hey, small fry, piece of gum. That way, let him know you see him just as another. And now we can go back to the other question about being strong and being complimented mm. on your strength. This is really a holistic episode. I think we're helping everybody. This one's for now. the strong ones, for you ever sure. Been to, ever been to Chipotle, John? <laughs> if you told me, if you told me, if you John, told me John Cena had not. <laughs> that's there's no fucking way John Cena doesn't. Pound that at because at Chipotle you can get as much protein packed into a little uh, a little bowl as you possibly as you want. So definitely John Cena eats at Chipotle. But he doesn't go with himself, week. right? No, he doesn't fuck. He doesn't if do you're anything. Asking me himself. if John Cena has ever physically been inside a Chipotle, I want to say it's no, right? Like no feels the like the answer to me. If you or Griffin, are you googling for pictures of John Cena at a Chipotle I'm right trying now? To tell. I'm trying to I'm trying to find it. I'll tell you what, you won't find any pictures of me in a Chipotle, but that's not because who cares? Like, yeah. of he's there. Um, no, I can't find it. I'm coming up short. I'll also say, Trav, I think they got some of the best chips in the business when they're hitting. Okay. Let's go to the money zone. <laughs> Did you guys know that John Cena used to be a character in WWE called the Doctor of Thugonomics? No. <laughs> it sucks so bad. If you told me the Doctor of Thugonomics had not been to a Chipotle, I would I would push you over physically. You are lying to me. If you uh, have been putting something off for a long time, Part of the problem may be that it, you just haven't made it convenient enough for yourself. If Ooh. I have a task that I hate doing, maybe it's not that I'm a procrastinator. Maybe it's just not the right size of commitment. Maybe you got to take it a little bit, step at a time. Let me give you one example. That thing you've been trying to mail, it's like such a hassle because you got to go all the way down to the post office. Mm. And you got to wait in the line. You got to talk yeah. to my people and you got to find the parking and all that stuff. What if you yeah. do all of it at your house with stamps.com? Imagine. Wait, do I have to deal with the people at my house? Are they parking? Well, it, only if they barge in on you. If you lock the door, you won't have to deal with anybody while you're doing all of your shipping business. Uh, it, it, all you need to make this work is a computer and a printer. They'll send you a scale so you can measure out what you're you're sending, and they've got huge discounts. It's not just more convenient. You can save like 89% off at USPS and UPS is, is part of this. So make this one thing. Mailing stuff just a little bit easier, maybe Do make it. it a little bit a little bit easier on yourself to uh, to get some of this stuff off your to do list. Free up more time for more important business with stamps.com. Sign up at stamps.com and enter code my brother for a special offer that includes a four week trial plus free postage. Whoa! A free digital scale. Whoa! No long term commitments or contracts. That's stamps.com. Sorry. Um, Sorry. I always forget the listeners can't see the video. Tony Hawk just showed up and started doing all this. <laughs> right. Yeah, right that's now. stamps.com code my brother. Stamps.com and the code is my brother. Ego Sum John Hodgman. At Ego Sum Janet Varney. And we're the hosts of E Pluribus Motto, a podcast dedicated to exploring the mottos of every state in the union. Every episode, we will spotlight one state and discuss its official symbols the motto, flowers, birds, beverages, songs. 
and even official state muffins. Plus, we'll hear from guests whose lives have been inspired by the state's iconography and from residents who call that state home. Bring some snacks, a map, and your travel journal because this podcast is a virtual journey like no other. Audi nostrumi pluribus motto quae libet alia lunae de maximum fun. And for the Latin challenged among you and us, listen to E Pluribus Motto every other Monday on Maximum Fun. Since 2017, Maximum Film has had the same slogan. The podcast that's not just a bunch of straight white guys. Ooh, we've learned something over the years. Some people out there really do not like that slogan. Listen, (laughs) we love straight white guys. Well, some of them. But if there's one thing we can't change, it's who we are. I'm Ify, a comedian who was on strike last year in two different unions. I'm Drea. I've been a producer and film festival programmer for decades. And I'm Alonzo, a film critic who literally wrote the book on queer Hollywood. You can listen to us talk movies and the movie biz every week on Maximum Film. We may not be straight white guys, but we love movies. And we know what we're talking about. Listen to Maximum Film on Maximum Fun or wherever you listen to podcasts. I won a $10 gift card to a local tea shop. The prize package included this faux movie poster made to promote the return of one of their flavors. They made some fake trailers on Instagram. I have no intention of hanging the poster, but I feel like I can't throw it or give it away. What do I do? That's from Impossible Poster in Post Falls. So the (laughs) post... ID? Yeah. What other state would that be? I don't know. (laughs) The poster, because this is a visual, is a is a primarily an audio medium, is for a film called The Tarot Returns, or and by film I guess I mean flavor, and it's just a, a picture of uh, four people sitting in chairs, and I'm, that's about it. It's pretty it's dramatic. It. It's very dramatic looks on their faces, and they are all wildly different sizes, like wildly different <laughs> sizes, <laughs> and different I think I would say too, I think yeah. I think the scale here would denote a level of importance within the flavor, like, yes. the rankings here. Right. And the way it is composed, it looks like this would be, like, a, you know, a movie with not a huge budget, but they did get Christian Slater to be in it. And so in the poster, Christian Slater is, like, four times the size of any other dude. Um, I guess there is one thing I here. want to address with the makers of The Tarot Returns. There are four people featured prominently in this poster and only three names listed. So yes. there yes. must have been some kind of crediting dispute. Well, the other one's Christian. Like, you know that's Christian Slater. You don't even oh, need to I put see. his name on the poster. Uh, yeah, this this is tough sometimes, but you got to remind yourself that it's not. It's not. It doesn't have feelings. Like, it doesn't. You've shared the image, right? You've captured it for history. That's a great point, Juice. You, you have, I will say... By sending this in, extended its power, extended mm. its reach. dramatically, 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 right? I mean, we, Travis picked part. the question out to include in the show, so really, a lot of the credit. I goes bet to Travis. you this will end up on our Tumblr is, or something, Instagram, some. Yeah. you know, you'll see it out there. I, Justin, I would. But like it's done. To, its work is done. Yeah, I would like you to tell me if I'm wrong, Justin. I think you'd put this up in your home. Would I, Justin yeah. McElroy? I think that if you got this. From a local cafe where you won a ten dollar gift card and you were given this poster, and you could put this up in your home and have people say, "Sorry, what is this?" Somewhere in your home, you would hang this up. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I would in a heartbeat. Yeah, that's I probably would true. I did st- st- steal the uh, the beer prices sign that they hung up during Margaritaville because someone had uh, used AI art to create it, and it is. Uh, truly outstanding <laughs> there's a lot of real unpredictable geometry and a lot of extra, extra teeth in mr buffett's head awesome uh i i do th- i mean lots of people pay tens of thousands of dollars for these priceless works of art just so that they can have a topic of conversation when they do invite guests over to sit and socialize in the drawing room. This is a free poster you got for not a lot of money. And right. it actually they came with money. <laughs> you got $10 extra for coffee stuff or tea stuff. Um, and so that's great. If I walk into your home and you have a fake movie poster for something called The Tarot Returns with three names before boys, um, I'm going to want to know what the story is with that. Do you know those people? Are no. they friends of yours? Are they friends of huh? yours? No. What is this no. movie? It's not. It's, it's not a, a movie. 
It's a it's tea a flavor. flavor. It's a flavor. Huh. So you and, like tea? You Let's talk are they about that. Or are you guys close? Or no, I don't dude, know. Dude, this is such a fucking good one because they learn a lot about you that you like tea. Every first date you should demand it must be in your drawing room. And, and you can play you a game your... where you're like, what name do you think corresponds with what person? What do you think yes. their relationship is within like the group? Who's the shy one? Who's the bad boy? You know? One of oh. them. Is it possible that one of them is named Taro? <laughs> Is that possible? That's maybe. Cool. And they also maybe his the- name is just T-A-R-O, so when it says the Terror Returns, it's like, it's not just talking about the plant, but rather the the man is na- also named Taro. Maybe. I don't know. I like that, though. It's a cool, strong name. I'm also not entirely certain what location they're at in this photo. It looks like a dark room that someone's being held uh, against their will in somewhere, maybe. I am yeah. threatened. I guess that's the question I have from the creators of Tarot Returns when you're making this poster, uh, assumedly, so that people will come in and buy the tea that you're making. I feel um, challenged. I feel threatened. Yeah. yeah. That, like, if I walked in and said, can I have a tarot thing? They'd be like, it's not for you. Would be yeah. for you. You don't deserve it. I also would have put more shit on the poster about what the tea is and what it's like. Yeah. And the flavors it brings. And how long and maybe that it is it. tea at all. That it is maybe tea. That it, That's a good point, there, There's a drink, a consumable, maybe the name of the shop. Uh, maybe any pertinent tea tales. But let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. I'm glad that shit's not on here. You know why? Because I walk why? into your home and I see that and then it's like... Yummy bug tea shop. I see that and I'm like, oh, it's a tea poster. That would ruin it. I'm not asking you about your tea poster. Like, that sucks that you have that up. But a mystery poster for a film that doesn't exist? Ugh. Yeah, I want to know about that. You I like tea, huh? Poster. My grandfather brewed tea. <laughs> like, you're li- like this date is going so well. It's and all you had to really do is good. go to your drawing room with them. Let's take them straight back to the drawing room. That's Don't what I'm saying. Date one, right to the drawing room. You learn everything you need to know about that person based on how they look at your fake movie poster for tea. Okay. A little bit. <laughs> I want a munch. Squad. I want to munch. Squad. Junior. Welcome to Munch Squad Junior. It's a podcast within a podcast profile. Within a podcast, it sounds like. No, it's just a shorter version. It's a mini bite. We call them snacks. We don't. We've never done that. Uh, but I just did want to mention a quick thing uh, about Baskin Robbins because I think that it's important that if we don't call out these brands for immoral behavior, then nobody will. So I we're the last to, vanguard of morality. I wanted to take a second to talk about this. Okay, I'm going to share with you the imagery. Introducing wickedly tempting new treats: Twix, Caramel Crunch, and the spooktacular. Polar pizza. Now, oh man, until the last two words of that headline, I was like, yum yum, sounds all good to me. Mm. Don't let your sweet tooth down this spooky season. Get ready to indulge in the ultimate Halloween treats. If you're looking for some hauntingly delicious desserts, Baskin Robbins is introducing new flavor of the month, Twix Caramel Crunch. I'm very interested. Yep. Thumbs up. And the scary good, spooktacular polar pizza ice cream treat. So this You're going to need the, to sell me on that one. That one I'm not so sure about. This is the flavor of the month, Twix Caramel Crunch. Okay. Kick ass. Oh, okay. Oh, so great. you can see it's got, and I'm not even going to talk to you about what's in it. It's like, it's, it's, it looks good, right? Now it I looks I just Now here's that, now here's oh, a spectacular Jesus polar pizza. Christ. You step, it's a, here's what, just, it says, step into the twilight zone and enjoy this pre-sliced shareable dessert. What? So this is what I want to add, add, this is what was bothering me. And before we get deeper into this, I want to say, just admit you forgot it was Halloween. Yeah. Just admit that when you were coming up with flavors and stuff, you didn't remember it was Halloween. Stop trying to pretend That's like you okay. meant for these to be scary. Justin, can you read the last sentence of the Twix Caramel Crunch paragraph? Yes, Travis. Thank you. That is the next sentence I wanted to read. Thank you. Good eye. Available while supplies last. Make sure to grab Twix Caramel Crunch before it ghouls away. Okay, listen. That doesn't hey. make it scary. And it also doesn't make any sense. Ghouls away. I think, that's, I mean, you could change nothing. you could change a handful of words in any of these and have it be like, grab the cookie crunch polar pizza before Santa Claus comes to deliver the presents. <laughs> 
Yeah. Before exactly. Christ, before Christ's resurrection, <laughs> your Uh-oh. lover and you can share this sextacular polar pizza. <laughs> they say thanks to Dad with a dadtastic polar pizza. This hey. also the pizza itself looks like you gave free reign to a Jesus. child, dude. It is a child's fantasy of it's a child's fantasy snack. That Can they we describe it? Also, take one bite of, and they're like, "I'm, I actually got too you. much." I'm gonna read. I want to read this paragraph actually without editorializing, and it's gonna be really difficult, but I'm going to. You can also enjoy our flavor of the month in our delicious new spectacular polar pizza. Step into the twilight zone and enjoy Fuck. this pre-sliced <laughs> shareable dessert featuring a chocolate chip cookie crust topped with Twix caramel crunch, M&M's milk chocolate candies, Halloween sprinkles, and drizzled with fudge topping. It's perfect for sharing with your ghouls at your next Halloween party. You guys get are really stuck on ghouls, huh? Yeah. I but you've also used it in two different ways. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Like, they're admitting that they know about ghouls. It's not a joke. I Listen. feel like this does slightly read like you did put in an AI prompt for a press release for these two items, and then you were added, oh. like, add to previous order Halloween That's ghouls. Right, That's right, Griffin. The bots think that they can just write these there on themselves because nobody's watching, but bad news for you bots. I'm We're watching. fucking watching, dude. Justin McElroy and his brothers are out here watching watching you every move you bots make. Don't think you can get one past me. I know that I know that no human wrote goals <laughs> twice in one paragraph. <laughs> just admit just admit that you forgot. Just admit you forgot. Also, I do like that they have shared as a bullet bullet point that this is pre sliced because at the point I would be at where I would buy one of these, that would be a major plus. For Dude, because I'm it, well, because you're probably too stoned to safely operate a knife. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no kidding, dude. This shit looks bananas. Like, it looks like the carpet at the Portland airport. This fucking shit looks crazy. It's also crazy. ice cream, so you know all of those M and M's and sprinkles and shit rock hard. Rock hard M and M's. Yeah, not yum. breaking. Now look at right here. Now right here at the bottom. Don't be scared to try all our treats from October first through October thirty first. Buy any polar pizza and any two novelty ice cream bar boxes for just thirty one dollars. Don't worry, we won't tell a soul. What is now? Is that supposed to be scary or, are or you threatening? Or threatening? Because I, mean, I didn't even think you would just tell anyone you're asking but... Robbins. Yeah, we won't tell anybody about your nasty predilection. Also, no is thirty one dollars a good price? Is it a good amount of money to spend on these three things? They just love the branding opportunities. Now, listen. Meanwhile, over at Sonic. Oh no! Check this out. Now that's what I'm fucking talking about. Sonic dude. unveils a spectacular Halloween treat with new witches, Bruce slash Float. Yeah. Casting is... a spell on taste buds nationwide this Halloween season with the launch of the Witch's Brew Slush Float. Witch's Brew Slush Fund. <laughs> <laughs> it's a li- it's part of the Flavorista Favorites premium drink lineup. That's right, a premium treat for What's the holiday. The Thank you. It's a limited time seasonal treat and is a refreshing twist on the classic caramel apple treat. Wait, a limited time treat and it's a refreshing twist on the caramel classic caramel apple treat? Yeah, thanks, bots. We got you on this one, too. But I do want to say the Witch's Brew Slush Float combines the tartness of green apple, thank you, seasonal, and salted caramel bubbles. Thank you. the salted caramel bubbles are, like, pitch black. Jet black. The whole drink looks terrifying. There is no way you would sell this at any other time of year, right? You're not going to come out with this ugly thing in spring. (laughs) This yeah, no horrible way. Horrible drink. Unless yeah. you're celebrating like a new release of a Shrek movie. Uh, yeah, I was I think also had Shrek on the mind on this one. Okay, Shrek, that Shrek is actually you. a very good point. Witch's Brew is our twist on a caramel apple that stands out from the crowd with its unique blend of seasonal flavors and textures, says Mackenzie Gibson. A witch. A witch. <laughs> a a real witch, witch who works at Sonic. <laughs> This hauntingly good creation not only captures the essence of Halloween season, but also delivers a deliciously fun experience that's truly a one of a kind. Witch's Brew is sure to become a seasonal favorite, and I will hold them to that, by the way. I will be checking up and make sure you bring it back in the future, because it is completely up to you if it becomes a seasonal favorite. Anyway, that's what's happening in the Halloween world. I just wanted to share uh, that Basket Robbins is a corrupt company that should be shut down. (laughs) 
<laughs> That's a really, I would agree just b- on optics of this fucking polar pizza alone. Because they, they forgot about Halloween. And if they, as always, all brands have always been more than welcome to email follow-ups to the Munch Squad desk if you would like to issue corrections. If we've gotten something wrong, I will say this, folks. In my 10 long years in the Munch Squad industry, I have never had a brand ask me for a retraction, which to me is basically agreement. (laughs) (laughs) You've worked your way up from the bottom. They acknowledge their own flaws. I've never lied on this show. He's never lied. Not once. Um, Thank you so much for listening to our podcast, My Brother, My Brother, Me. 733 of them, and I'm still having just as much fun as I did the first time. Probably more. Definitely more. I'm stressed about it. Yeah. So chill. Hey, very exciting. This week, this very week, it was this very week that we're going to be in Denver and Phoenix. We're doing My Brother, My Brother, Me in Denver on the 18th, and then Phoenix. Uh, we're doing uh, Adventure Zone and a My Brother, My Brother, and Me. That Adventure Zone is a Taz versus Drac Halloween special. Um, as far as the My Brother, My Brother, and Me's go, if you have questions that you want answered or a wish to fungal or that you want read aloud, email it to mbmbam at maximumfun.org and put the name of your city that you'll be attending in the subject line. Um, we also have, in November, shows in Indianapolis and Milwaukee, and Dad and I are going to be, not too long now, into this month, I believe the 25th and 26th, um, at MCM London, uh, doing some panels there, doing some signings, photos, stuff like that, I think. So check that out, bit.ly slash McElroy Tours for tickets and information. Uh, we also have merch in the McElroy Merch Store, McElroyMerch.com. We've got restocked Hunger Dice and a Trav Nation t-shirt. I was wearing it yesterday. It's probably my favorite t-shirt we've done. If you can get one, get it while it's fast. We got a couple <laughs> on there. Get it what? <laughs> get it while it's hot. Is what I'm okay. Get it while it's fast and hot, dude. And 10% of all proceeds this month go to Native Women Lead. So go check that out, macroandmerch.com. Thanks to Montaigne for the use of our theme song, um, our, My Life is Better With You. I almost said Our Life is Better With You, but that's also true. Like, yeah. our lives are mm. better um, because of, of Montaigne's incredible work uh, on this one. Uh, so, so check it out and go listen to all Montaigne's work. This is fantastic. All right. We have a final wish that we want to elevate to Fungalore um, to to it is unnecessary, but we do like to do it. Uh, we'll send it up. Juice, you want to read this one? Yeah. I wish blood pressure numbers meant something to me. My name is Justin McElroy. I'm Travis McElroy. <laughs> I'm Griffin McElroy. It's been my brother, my brother, me. Kiss your dad. Square on the lips. Maximum Fun, a worker-owned network of artist-owned shows, supported directly by you.